Hey there, Mr. Redder here. Welcome back to another episode of Reddit Podcast Stories, where today, am I the jerk for taking away my daughter's gifts because she didn't spend Christmas with us? My daughter, Leia, her mother and I were never married, but we did officially separate when she was five. I got with my wife, Naya, back when Leia was nine, and I married Naya when Leia was 12. Leia never really got on with Naya, didn't want to spend time with her, and was just generally unpleasant to her. We're currently in family therapy, and honestly, I think Leia just says the meanest things possible to avoid actually discussing her feelings with us. She's absolutely amazing to hang around with one-on-one, -on -one, but is unpleasant around Naya. We were all supposed to spend Christmas together, as per our custody agreement. Leia is 16 now, and we have been more lenient, but we have always adhered to our agreement for holidays and birthdays. On Christmas Eve, Leia left to see her boyfriend's family and drop off her gifts. At around 6, I call her and ask her when she's heading home. She says that she's staying there. I know her mom lives near her boyfriend, and I asked if that's where she was going. She didn't answer. I told her to come home, and she pretty much agreed, but never did. I then called her boyfriend's parents, and they confirmed she left to her mother's, and I called her mother, who said Leia was there. Naya was heartbroken because she felt like Leia didn't want to be there because of her. This year, Naya handled all the gifts. She did the work of going to the stores and picking them out. I decided my daughter wasn't allowed to treat Naya like this and had to at least be civil with her. So when Leia got home, I asked why she wasn't at Christmas. She said she wanted to spend it with her real mom. I said that's fine. When she asked about her gifts, I said her fake mom got it for her, so she doesn't need them. Needless to say, she's upset with me and hasn't said anything since. Naya appreciates me putting my foot down, but she feels like Leia is a lost cause and to just give her the gifts. Leia's mom agrees she needs to stop treating Naya badly and expecting no consequences. Am I the jerk? Note, she has the gifts her mom and boyfriend and other family got her, just not the ones that Naya got her. I got her a car for Christmas, gifted it to her in November because she needed it. Leia is an only child on both sides. I have no other kids and I don't plan to. I'm fine with having a relationship with Leia outside of Naya. My issue is she treats Naya badly, like subhuman. She acts outright nasty to her. I wouldn't push so hard if she could at least be civil. Probably an unpopular opinion, but not the jerk. My parents split when I was 10. I never really liked my new stepmom, but I was at least polite to her, despite making it clear that I'd never have a real relationship with her. We don't buy each other gifts for Christmas or hang out in any way, but we can coexist around each other. So long as Naya hasn't done anything specific to upset Leia or done anything nasty to her because of this, which I will assume isn't the case because you didn't mention it, then Leia needs to learn how to be polite and civil without having a relationship. Unlike others have said, no, you don't need to pick between having a relationship with your daughter or just accepting this. Am I the jerk for telling my mom she can't discard me and her grandkids and expect me to invite her over for Christmas? My mom was a single mom to me until I, 28 male, was 7. She then met my stepdad, Joe, and married him. Joe had been divorced for 3 years and had 2 kids who were 6 and 4 at the time. Joe's relationship with his ex-wife was hostile, possibly the most hostile I've ever witnessed even to this day. Joe's ex decided her and Joe's kids should never treat my mom with respect and she had them treating my mom like she was the other woman. I was upset for my mom at the time, and she told me they would grow up and realize what their mom had done, and they would come around, at least to the point of being civil. I think at some point, my mom saw her stepkids as a challenge she needed to win. She went out of her way to win them over, and there were many times it came at my expense. The worse they treated her, the more she focused on them and forgot she had an actual son who loved and needed her. Joe was fine, but he worked a lot, so I felt abandoned by my mom, and I felt like my mom wouldn't even notice if I was gone. When Joe's kids were teenagers, their mom passed and they moved in with us permanently. Before this, they were at our house every other week. Them moving in was horrible. They would yell at my mom on a daily basis. They would tell her they wish it had been her instead of their mom who had passed. They called her all sorts of horrible names. They spread a rumor around high school that mom had cheated on Joe. Joe had his kids in therapy. He had talks with them, issued consequences for their mistreatment of my mom, but at no point did it stop and equally at no point my mom gave up. When I moved out for college, it became clear to me that mom was going to stay more concerned with her stepkids than with me. She was disinterested when I introduced her to my wife. 
We met in college. She really didn't take much of an interest in our wedding planning. She was busy trying to get Joe's kids to see her because once they moved out, they told Joe that they would only see him alone. Once or twice, his kids asked my mom for money and that kept her holding on. When my wife and I had our first baby is when I gave up. My mom showed zero interest and didn't make any effort to meet my daughter for weeks and when she did meet her, there was still zero interest. Joe went to his kids for Christmas this year and left my mom home. Mom sent me a text saying this and I ignored it. Two days ago, she left a voice message saying I should have invited her to my house for Christmas so she wasn't alone and could be with her son and grandkids. I called her right back and I told her she can't discard us and then expect me to invite her to Christmas. I told her she would rather chase people who don't even care about her than her own son who loves her so she can buzz off and leave me alone and stop trying to make us her consolation prize. Mom claimed I was cruel and out of line with how I treated her. Am I the jerk? Not the jerk. Try asking her, Mom, if Joe and his kids had asked you to be with them for Christmas, we both know you wouldn't even be thinking of spending time with me and my wife and your grandkids. You want your stepkids, you don't want me. She wants to be with Joe, fair play, he's her husband. She wants to be with his kids rather than with you. That's so hurtful. You say you love her. It's possible that family therapy might work, you and your mom. It's more possible that your mom needs therapy. But it seems clear that so long as she's focused on the most important thing in her life being her stepkids liking her, she'll never have enough time for you. My boyfriend chooses his mother over me. I, 30 female, and my boyfriend, 36 male, have been dating for 8 years now. For context, he was raised by a single mother who's 70 and healthy, and she had 7 kids. She doesn't like any of her kids' partners. My partner is the youngest. My boyfriend and I often spoke about the impact the absence of his father had on him. He told me he wants to be around to raise his future kids. I was raised in a two-parent household and I wanted the same for our future kids. We had many discussions and were on the same page about everything. We agreed that we would live together in four years, 2019. In 2019, he purchased a building with five units. His brother and his family live in one, wife and three kids. My boyfriend and his mother live in one, and he rents out the other two. When my boyfriend bought his building, he told me he wanted to give his mother a unit and for me to move in with him. I told him that was very sweet and I was on board with it. He said he wanted two years to fix up her unit, then she would move out and I would move in, in 2021. I already own a home, so the plan was always to move in with him and rent out my house. Two years ago, I got pregnant, 2021, and this made his mother upset. She said that she wanted nothing to do with me or the baby. She made it very clear that she was never going to move out. She told me she is the queen of the house and I would be the queen when she passes. I was furious and asked her how she could say such hateful things. My boyfriend spoke to her and they had an argument. He told me he would not force her to move out. I reminded him that his plan was to always put her in her own unit which is in the same building. He said she was not interested. I suggested that he move in with me, and he said no, he didn't want to live in my city. He said that I should just move in with them. I refused. Why would I want to live with someone who doesn't even like me? I asked why he wanted to raise his daughter in a broken home. His mother told me I better get used to being a single mother. She said I only have one, so it won't be that difficult. I live in a different city from my boyfriend. We live an hour away from each other. When our daughter was born, he spent the first four weeks at my house. Every day he would go home to do something for his mother. This really annoyed me. His mother does not have any ailments and is able to do things for herself. I suggested that he ask his brother to do whatever needs to be done. He told me it wouldn't be possible as his brother is very busy with his family. When I asked him why he had to go home every day, he said his mother needed him because she was feeling lonely. I asked him when he thinks he'll cut the umbilical cord. This really struck a nerve. His mother got sick during lockdown and I nursed her back to health. I thought this was the turning point for us. However, when she got better, she became even more mean towards me. She told me she didn't like me and never will. I asked her if I did something to her. She told me I hadn't done anything and she just doesn't like me. I spoke to my boyfriend about it and he told me she never likes anyone that he dates. He told me all of his past relationships have ended because of his mother. She was mean to all of his past partners and basically ran them away. He knows he needs to set more boundaries. He said he feels guilty because she was a single mom who took care of him, so now it's his turn to take care of her. I told him that he should prioritize the family that we are building. 
I asked him when he thinks he will be ready to live his life and he said whenever she passes. I told him since he's choosing his mother over his family, remember to choose her after she's gone as well. I will not wait for his mother to pass to live my life. Am I the jerk? I think I know why your boyfriend's dad ran away. Not the jerk. I'm shocked that you went through an entire pregnancy and nothing changed. He couldn't have freed up a unit for you and the baby? If he didn't make a single accommodation for his family at that point, he never will. This dude is messed up. I'm Latter-day Saints. I don't need to sign your registration agreement. Been working at a Western hotel chain, locally owned since August of this year. It's my first time ever working the front desk, but I caught on quickly and it's become my favorite job I've ever had. We have the largest Latter-day Saints population. I found out upon moving from out of state. I encounter the occasional rude guest who is usually just upset they book through a third party and were unaware of our incidental fees, etc. Most guests are understanding, polite, and I even have great relationships with the regulars. Incoming an older lady who we will call Mary, approximately 75 years old and single, who began staying with us in August when I began. She was in for medical treatment at the nearby hospital. She started off so sweet and kind. We gave her our courtesy 15% off medical rate and did not charge her any incidental fees or cleaning fees upon leaving. She repeatedly could not walk as she's had operations on her legs and would bleed onto our sheets. She would always extend via telephone, which hotel policy now no longer permits. We would authorize her card and go on about the day. We even began giving her a special rate between $89 and $99 a night. She was old and confused. Well, who knew special treatment would lead to such entitlement? On December 12th, she was due to check out and a coworker extended her over the phone without a credit card reauthorization or signing a new registration card. The extension was done backwards, which led to the ensuing issues after. That night, two coworkers, P and L, went to her room as she asked for towels and trash to be taken out. They figured they would bring the new registration card to her door since she can't walk far. She began yelling adamantly that, I'm LDS. I don't need to sign this. I've already signed one. P&L explained that in our most recent meeting, our manager made it clear how important having guests sign updated registration cards and credit card authorizations were. She kept refusing, so they left. She then called the front desk where L picked up and she began ranting as to how rude the people were she just spoke with. No signed card plus no reauthorization equals no room. The next day I hear about this, so I decide I'll call her. Maybe I can get her to sign it. She knows me well and we've had good conversations. She's told me how sweet and hardworking I am. So I dial her room. No answer. Oh well. Then she calls back. Karen. Did I miss a call? Me. Yes ma'am. This is OP at the front desk. I noticed you haven't signed your new registration card since extending. I could bring it to your room and have you sign it. That way you don't have to come all the way down here. I already told your people, I'm not signing anything. Me. Oh, well, unfortunately, it's hotel policy for guests to sign new registration cards upon extension. I told you people, I already signed one and I'm not signing it again. I am LDS. I don't smoke, drink, or party. You shouldn't be worrying about me and instead worry about the people who do those things. Me. Well, ma'am, those who don't follow hotel policy are fined accordingly. I will need you to sign the card though. I am LDS. Don't you understand? I don't smoke or oh, me. Well, if you don't smoke, then you should have no issue signing it then, right? Karen. Is the assistant manager in today? I'm going to have a talk with her. Me. Of course. She'll be in contact shortly. I hang up. I call assistant manager and personally explain the situation and she says she will go by her room personally to have a talk. I did my job and it's out of my hands at this point. Until, 30 minutes later, Karen marches to my desk and says, I'm checking out. I've been hounded for two days by you people. What's your name? I'm OP. You. I've never had someone speak to me so rudely and treat me with such disrespect. I already told you I signed the card. Yes, ma'am. You signed it for your initial stay, but you must sign a new and updated one upon extension. They never had me do that before me. Well, I'm sorry. Whoever you dealt with was not doing their job properly, but this is the hotel's policy. Don't tell me about policy, young lady. I know my rights. I'm LDS. I don't drink or smoke, so I shouldn't have to sign. 
I've given you so much business, and for you to accuse me of this is ridiculous. I've given you so much money. Me. And we have lost a lot of money too with all of your special treatment and unwarranted discounts. Just check me out. I can see she has three different cards on file, but none with reauthorization. So Karen, I don't have authorization on any of your cards here. She interrupts me. Oh, you're a liar. You're lying to me. You're full of tricks, aren't you? Well, ma'am, I don't know which card to charge because there's no authorization. There are three cards listed here. We can authorize whichever card you have now and I'll charge it. Then you can leave. She puts a card in the machine. Ma'am, I do need to see your ID and match your name to the card before we authorize. Why are you lying to me? No, this is standard policy. You don't need to see anything. Just run the card. I decide to call my manager in front of her and say, Hi, Karen is wanting to check out early, but I have no authorization on any card, so I don't know which one to charge. She also refuses to show me her ID to match the card. Could I please get some help? Then comes our sales manager, Jay, whom she actually likes. Thank God you're here. This lady right here, points her card at me, has a real problem. There's something wrong in her head. I don't even know how she has a job here. She's been lying to me and telling me I need to sign something I've already signed. I'm LDS, honey. I don't smoke or drink. I don't need to sign anything. I hate to leave, but I'm sure there are other hotels who would love to give me a discount. Jay. Yes, ma'am. Well, the registration doesn't just mention smoking. It also says, Honey, don't tell me. I already know. Just check me out. She complies with Jay's request, and she continues shaking her finger at me, calling me a liar and a trickster. I began helping a different guest who came to check in and I see Karen begin walking out the door. As she leaves, I yell, Hey Karen, you have a blessed rest of your day. And she glared at me with so much malice. I then ran to the bathroom and cried. I couldn't believe I just had an encounter like that. I try so hard to be kind, but some people are just not worth it. My managers then hugged me and told me that I did nothing wrong and we added her to our do not rent list. Thank God we won't have to deal with this delusional old lady again. Maybe there's a reason she's all alone in the hotel room instead of having kids, family, or friends to take care of her after medical treatment. Maybe you're not that great of a person if you have to proclaim how good you are because you're LDS. Student Assignment to Get Instagram Followers My daughter is a freshman in high school. As an elective, she has an enterprise class. It's part of the FBLA classes and should be an easy A. They run the school store and make the school shirts and merch to raise money for FBLA. The teacher is an overweight ex-college football player and assistant high school football coach. He thinks he's pretty high and mighty, but is always unshaven and looks like he's been wearing the same clothes for days. Most of the assignments were easy things, like if they learned to run the computer for making shirts, cash register, money handling, and easy things we expected. My daughter has had straight A's her entire life, but this guy grades assignments by the class, not the student. So if a couple of kids mess up, the whole class has a lower grade, which sucks for the kids trying to keep their grades high. Two weeks before the end of semester, the teacher hadn't entered any grades since September. Even though the kids had no type of lessons or previously covered subject, their final grade was to get the school FBLA Instagram 300 new followers. Pass or fail as the group grade for all three periods of students that he taught the class. It was totally out of left field as they hadn't learned anything about social media in the class and my daughter risked failing her final based off of the performance of a bunch of other kids. I looked at the school's Instagram account and it's been active for 5 years but only had 300 followers. Yet, they were expected to double it in 2 weeks time. I waited to see if he was being serious or not. It came down to deadline of when they were supposed to have gained the followers and they'd only gotten about 20. So I spent $6 and I bought them 500 followers just to prove a point that it was a crap assignment and could easily be cheated. In 30 minutes, they had over 800 new followers that were obviously fake accounts. They had no posts and barely even had a profile pic. The teacher came to class and said that since they didn't have the followers, he was giving them a B. He admitted that he hadn't even checked how many they had gotten. He was just automatically giving them a B. The kids got mad and showed him that they had gotten it so high the teacher didn't question it and was totally caught off guard. He was so happy, he gave them 110 on all three class period final grades. So it turns out that I spent $6 just to be a smarty pants, but I got about 70 of them 110 scores on their class final. 
Am I the jerk for opening a fake gift during a Christmas family party? Every year my family does Christmas at my mom's and she insists that we all open all of our presents together, even gifts between spouses, etc. It's normally an okay tradition, but sometimes it can spark jealousy or comparison between families. This year, my husband saved up and bought me my dream designer handbag for Christmas. I know some people aren't into that, but it's something that I truly love. We're not well off, but we're not doing poorly either. But I know that the handbag would cause a lot of discussion amongst my siblings and parents. I just didn't want their opinions and criticisms to ruin a special gift my husband worked hard to get for me. So this year, my husband got me an extra gift that wasn't the real gift. It was a moderately priced skincare set. Christmas came and went without drama, but I recently posted a picture of my husband and our kids at dinner, and my handbag could be seen hanging off the back of my chair. One of my friends commented underneath about how gorgeous my Christmas gift was as well. Long story short, word got back to my family and they totally blew up. Some were annoyed that I opened a private gift separately from the family. Others were criticizing the price of the gift. My siblings are now calling me disingenuous for harboring a secret gift and they said that I did it because I think I'm better than them. I didn't open it with them because I didn't want their opinions, but now I'm starting to feel like a jerk for keeping it a secret. I knew either way they'd all criticize me since it was so much more expensive than all the other gifts, so I don't know whether or not I'm wrong. Not the jerk, and honestly, it's time for you to be 100% bluntly honest with them. Screen cap all their snarky comments and send a group chat with them stating this. If you all want to know so badly why I harbored a secret gift as you call it, these types of comments are exactly why. This bag is not something I thought I would ever have as we are not well off enough to make purchases similar in cost to this bag. But my husband worked so hard and saved up to get it for me. And instead of being happy for us, you're talking smack. You call it a waste of money or claim that I think I'm better than you. The behavior all of you have around Christmas gifts sucks the joy out of even getting something like this. And had I opened it at mom's house in front of all of you, I wouldn't even have been able to be happy about it because I know that you all would react exactly as you did. Honestly, I'm not sure if my family and I will be continuing to take part in this tradition because we're tired of the jealousy, the comparisons, and the competition. It's tiring. It makes it hard to be happy with the gifts we get, even if we would be ecstatic to get them as I was with this bag when he gave it to me. My cousin blames me for her being single and broke. I, 25 female, recently got engaged a few months back and my fiance, Carter, 26 male, and I are deep in the wedding planning stages. We were both at a family dinner party this past weekend when people asked us how the wedding planning was going, particularly my cousin, Danny, who's 32, female. Carter and I have been very fortunate enough to be in a situation where we can plan our dream wedding and are able to pay the majority of it ourselves with a little help from our parents. When we went into the details of how we want it to be a big wedding to invite a lot of friends and family we haven't seen in years due to lockdown, Danny immediately made comments about how we're spending twice her income for one day no one else cares about, and many other disrespectful comments throughout the night about our plans. For some context, Danny was pursuing a college degree that was completely financed by my parents as her mother could not afford it. But in her last year, she was expelled due to getting caught plagiarizing on a draft of her thesis. She hid this from my parents for a whole year, but still continued to accept their monthly checks that were meant to be for her tuition and instead pocketed the money around $30,000. This basically has limited her opportunities in the job market as she never graduated and her then boyfriend left her a year ago after he discovered what she had been doing and he didn't want to be with someone that had been lying about their degree and income. After her initial comment, she then went on to say how if my fiance and I are able to spend all this money on our wedding, we could put the money to better use by helping her out instead as she wants to pursue community college courses to finish her degree. I said absolutely not and this caused a huge argument because she kept saying how it's not fair that I'm rubbing it in about how I get the fancy wedding and fancy fiance and she's struggling to pay her bills after her ex kicked her out. I do sympathize with her situation but she literally cheated, got kicked out of a school as a consequence, proceeded to lie and steal $30,000 from my parents and then lost her boyfriend for hiding all this from him for two years. The reason Danny is in this situation is her own fault, and I told her this exactly in front of everyone at dinner. Now our grandmother is calling me nonstop 
saying how I'm being selfish and inconsiderate when my cousin is clearly going through a really hard stage in her life and family doesn't humiliate one another. Basically, she now is siding with my cousin, saying maybe I could scale down my wedding a bit to not rub it in her face. It's kind of always been like this with my grandmother growing up because Danny is the firstborn grandchild that came after many issues and was always favored over my siblings and I. So, am I the jerk? Or I guess more realistically, was I being a bad person for the way I responded to Danny? Not the jerk. Danny is an adult and more than responsible for facing the consequences of her own actions. She very well could have not cheated, on a thesis might I add, and finished her degree. Then she wouldn't be broke, and she didn't have to lie to her boyfriend about the situation. But she did, and that's why she's single. You're completely right. It's her own fault, and she needs a wake-up call. If Grandma cares about Danny so much, why doesn't she pay for her community college payments then? Do yourself a favor and uninvite both Danny and your grandmother from your wedding. You're doing nothing wrong, and you deserve to enjoy this event however you and your fiancé choose to do so. Not the jerk. You didn't actually do much here. You answered questions about your wedding plans and said no when your cousin asked you to pay her tuition. Even without the history between your cousin and your parents, you're not the jerk. How you spend your money is your business. It might have been slightly different if you'd gloated about your financial situation or mocked your cousin about hers, but you didn't. From what you wrote versus your grandmother's reaction, your cousin is likely telling her a very twisted version of the story. Am I the jerk for not defending my boyfriend when my brother asked him to leave? I'm 28, female. My boyfriend, 27, male, is Ryan. He likes to help others. He's the type of guy who would give a coworker money for their rent or buy groceries for our neighbor. However, he can take it too far at times. He often tries to help people without asking if they need or want his help. Every year, my brother, 35, male, Paul, and his wife, 33, female, Lily, host a holiday dinner. This year, Ryan attended for the first time. Before we left for their house, I told Ryan that Lily was legally blind and she has been for her entire life. She knew what she could and could not do. I told Ryan to only help Lily if she asked for help. We arrived early so I could help Paul and Lily cook. While we were cooking, Ryan kept telling Lily things like, Lily, if you're looking for the salt, it's to your right. Or, Lily, don't put that there, it's too close to the edge. Lily and Paul both told him that while his commentary was somewhat helpful, it was completely unnecessary. Still, Ryan did not stop. However, things became tense when Lily went to go chop vegetables. When she pulled out a knife, Ryan stopped her and asked if he could take over because he didn't want Lily to hurt herself. Lily said she'd be fine, but Ryan insisted she give him the knife. Finally, Paul got annoyed and told Ryan to stop. Ryan did stop, but he kept hovering over Lily when she was chopping. I asked Ryan to sit down until dinner was ready, but Ryan insisted that he just wanted to help. Finally, Lily asked us to set the table and greet people arriving. We did, but things were still tense. I did pull Ryan to the side and reminded him again to only help Lily if she asked for it. He agreed, but I could tell that he was still upset. Everything finally boiled over after dinner. My nieces, who are 5 and 3, have a game they love to play with their mother. They will hand Lily something, and Lily will have to guess what it is. Lily would sometimes make a couple of clearly outrageous guesses, like saying an egg is an elephant or a shoe, to make her daughters laugh. After dinner, the eldest handed Lily the salt shaker. When Lily guessed that it was a phone, Ryan piped up and said it was a salt shaker. Lily laughed it off and explained the game to Ryan, but I could see she was annoyed. My niece then handed Lily a coin. When Lily guessed incorrectly, Ryan loudly told Lily that it was a coin. This was apparently the last straw for Paul. Paul demanded that Ryan leave since he clearly couldn't respect Lily. Ryan insisted that he was trying to be helpful. However, Lily said it was probably best if Ryan and I left. I quickly gathered up our things and managed to convince Ryan to leave. Ryan is currently upset with me. He said I should have defended him, especially since I knew he was only being helpful. He also insisted that I should have stood up against Paul's overreaction, Ryan's words. I'm now wondering if I should have defended Ryan. Am I the jerk? Not the jerk. Ryan didn't deserve to be defended there. I'm sorry, I'm sure you love Ryan, but good lord he sounds insufferable. He wasn't being nice, he was being patronizing. Lily neither wanted nor needed his help. He stuck his nose where it didn't belong and he was asked to stop numerous times. I would have kicked him out too. It doesn't sound like he wants to be helpful. 
It sounds like he wants to be the benevolent yet superior being. He wants to feel the gratitude of the lesser masses. He can't handle being around a capable person who won't accept his magnanimity. Your boyfriend is very condescending. Not the jerk for not defending him, but maybe you should have told him to back off yourself more firmly. Young firefighter disrespects a lieutenant, so I shame him and get him to quit. I got revenge on this jerk I used to volunteer firefight with. This was in the early to mid 2000s. I decided to join the local fire department as a volunteer firefighter. I did it for about five years and it was great. Training consisted of three months of fire training, two nights a week and all day Saturday. And then you would go to EMT training, another three months of training. I was about a year in and I was asked to help train some new recruits. One of the lieutenants, Amy, was a short middle-aged woman who was so full of fire she could make a grown man cry. One of those people who commands both fear and respect wherever she went. Honestly, a great lieutenant and a great person. When she wasn't being a drill sergeant, she was extremely kind and generous. She would often bake people cakes and treats and deliver them to the various stations in our department. However, in this new academy class that I was asked to help with, there was a jerk kid that we will call Aaron. Aaron talked big during the training and acted like he was the all-American hero, like he was going to be the leader in backdraft too. He performed moderately well in training, but far from the top of the class. He gets assigned to Amy's station, which is a pretty quiet station in the department. A few months after he starts, Amy swings by my station one night to say hi. She brings us the mother load cake from Claim Jumper, massive six layer cake. She explained that she had treated her crew to a night out at Claim Jumper, which must have cost a lot of money. I think she took out eight people and bought a whole cake to top it all off. They had eaten the first two layers, so she gave us the remaining four. We thanked her profusely and she left. Back then, the big social media platform was MySpace, and I decided to look up some of the people in her department to make friends. I came across Aaron's page and I noticed some photos of him and the rest of his crew at Claim Jumper with Amy. However, when I read the comments, he bragged about how he had purposefully ordered the most expensive dinner, appetizers, and drinks since Amy was buying. He bragged about how he was going to take advantage of her stupidity. This alone ticked me off because she was being super nice by doing this and generous. What an ungrateful, selfish jerk. Then I read the rest of his profile. He had videos and memes on his page glorifying himself as a superstar firefighter, bragging about running into burning buildings and how he was such a hero. He was flirting with girls, blatantly trying to impress them with how brave he is. Bear in mind, he just graduated from the academy three months prior and hadn't even gone to EMT school. He had never been to a house fire and all he basically did was carry gear for the other fully qualified firefighters. It was too much for me to tolerate. So here's the revenge. I printed off copies of his MySpace page, including his comments about Amy and toxic bragging. I made multiple copies and took them to every station in the department. We all had pagers and a small keyboard at each station to send out text messages. I made an anonymous, all-staff page to everyone in the department. I had to keep it brief since I couldn't fit a ton of characters, but I sent out his MySpace info and told everyone about how he had treated Amy. Within an hour, Aaron had cleaned out his MySpace page of all the posts, photos, etc. A couple of days later, he deleted his account. It's a good thing I had made so many copies. Immediately after this happened, he stopped coming to volunteer and a few weeks later, I heard that he had quit. I later talked to Amy and admitted I was the one who sent the page. I told her I hated how he treated her and she thanked me. She seemed really sad and hurt by what he had done, but being the tough short lady that she was, she quickly got back into being an actual tough firefighter. She later started dating and married a fire chief that also helped out at the academy. I've lost touch with her, but I hope she did well. She seemed happy last time I saw her. Owner steals the tip I left from my favorite waitress. I go to a local lunch spot a few times a week and I'm waited on by the same young woman every time I eat there. She's always very polite and she knows I have limited time so she lets me leave cash on the table for my bill rather than stand in line at the register. I always leave her the change, probably about $6 on a $14 tab. Last week, I dropped off a Christmas card for her and I tucked a $100 bill in the card thanking her for her service throughout the year. She wasn't there, so I left the sealed card with the owner. Yesterday, I went for lunch and my favorite waitress was there. As soon as she saw me, she smiled and thanked me for my Christmas card and the $20 I gave her. I was sort of shook. 
I said, I left you $100. That's when she told me that the owner had opened her card and since all tips are shared by the staff, he gave everyone a share. When I found this out, I was floored. This meant the guy had opened a sealed card that I delivered. He took the $100 out and put $20 back into her card. As I was leaving, I saw the guy coming out of the back and I asked to speak with him. He came over and I told him I didn't appreciate him opening something private that I had left for the waitress and that he either owed me $80 or her. He started explaining that all tips are shared, but I cut him off. You do not open a sealed card with someone else's name on it. If I had known that was going to happen, I would have never have left it with the owner. He told me that he knew there was probably money in it and he wanted it to be fair to everyone who worked for him. So I asked a guy behind the counter, did you get $20 from this guy? The dude didn't answer, but when the owner looked away, the dude shook his head very quickly. I yelled back into the kitchen, Hey, did any of you get $20 from this guy last week? Lots of confused looks. The owner tried to comp my tuna sandwich, then got angry at me for causing a scene. He threatened to call the cops and told me to never return to his diner again. I left, but I told the waitress I would be back around today at noon to give her the $80. She insisted that she didn't want it, but I'm making sure she gets it. I have to ask, is there anything I can do here? I feel like he literally stole from one of his employees. Update. Thank you for the feedback. I won't leave a bad review just because there are people who work there and the food is good. I met my waitress at lunch across the street and tried to give her $80, but she told me the owner gave it back to her before she finished her shift. What a great person. She wouldn't take it even after I said she could have it. To the poster who said I should never have given the card to someone other than the waitress, you're spot on, mate. Lesson learned. Do this next. Tap here on your screen to come see our new podcast playlist, where you'll find thousands of hours of the best stories you've ever heard. Or tap the one on the right. That episode is specifically just for you, based on other videos you've enjoyed the most.